what has taken me seven hours to do has now become reality. Well, that's going on our own. It's your boy Thriller here of the JJDL. Well, you may know me as Thriller96, but you can call me Thriller for short. And we are here for Season 4, Civil War of the JJDL, the John Jr. Draft League. This season for Civil War, we are going to have four teams of 12 coaches in each, battling it out, where the top, where the best of the best duke it out, the captains of each team have drafted their players. Everyone has drafted their teams. And now it is up to the teams to battle it out for supremacy, especially to prove who is the best evil team. Even though Team Galactic's not on here, I just I figured Team Galactic would be getting some representation here since we know we had Jins 3, 5, 1. You know, I figured I figured we'd get Jet 4 in here, you know. But, uh, you know, saying, saying. Anyways, with that being said, um, I literally did take about seven hours to make this uh, list, and I would really, really appreciate if everyone would hit that like button, share this with your friends, and get a view out there, as this really did take so much work to do. Um, from not only because I not only ranked the entire teams, like the team division themselves, like everyone in this place is called Team Rocket Division. I ranked everyone from one to twelve, and that not only did I do that, I literally ranked all 48 coaches from the worst team to the best team so i took a lot of time to do this so i would really appreciate just sending out a like like giving me a like sharing this and even leaving a comment just to show support on the video it would really make this all worth it for me and i figured i'd do this because the jdl fans i took a challenge with 75 thrill love reacts and unfortunately i think i also Set a little bit of a unrealistic time frame with like a day and a half. So what happened was we had over halfway gotten those um, by the end of Monday. And I decided you don't want the people want to see it. And plus, we technically did get over halfway to our goal. I said, F it. I'm doing it for the people. And I'm doing it for the content and doing it for everyone here that actually loves the JGL content that we have here. So with that being said, we're we'll going ahead and talk about this team. Now, I actually did try to record this video, and I was trying to pause my recording, uh, but I actually hit stop recording. So I'm actually re-recording this. So I am going to kind of brush through Team Rocket a little faster. Uh, sorry, Team Rocket, but uh, it's only fair that I do that, and then I kind of go based where I was at, because I think I got up to... Aurora or Armenia in uh, the star division and then I will go with more evenly ranked from there but I'm going to do a little bit of a speed speed round here just to kind of get us all caught up here so if Team Rocket thinks this is offensive I'm sorry I just if I didn't pause or if I didn't stop the recording I would have been able to keep going with everything to be the same so I hope everyone does like, understand and plus I really need to get this video done so that way I have it done and ready for you guys because it's definitely going to take a long time to upload. So, real quick, we're going to talk about Team Rock. We're going to talk about some fun facts for you guys. So, the lowest ranked team I ever gave was a 7. There was no team that was... There was one or two teams that I was really debating on giving a 6 slash 6.5 to. But, at the end of the day, I settled for 7s on those teams. And just overall felt like those teams were really, really good. After that, I have ranked teams. The highest ranked a team got was a 9 out of 10. And the 9 out of 10s usually mean there's like maybe one, one and a half things that I think was enough to drop it by one point versus like a half point, essentially. And obviously with point fives, there's like maybe like a tiny thing that I feel like that affects it that would have made it bigger and awesomer for the team. So. In case anyone was wondering, there were a 10 out of 10 score, and there were only two coaches that got this 10 out of 10 score. So let's kick it off here with Team Rocket and find out where the ranks were at. So we start with the lowest rank we have in Team Rocket, which was 7.5, which I said I was going to say nice things about his team, and I'm really sorry that it sounds like I'm a hypocrite, but not a Zodiac, not the Zodiac. Unfortunately for Team Rocket, had the lowest score of the team. Uh, to sum up what I basically said, I felt like there was a lot of things that was great about it. 
I just feel like you have Mons that you're into force to be speedy, rather be defensive setup sweepers. And I also felt like hazards were kind of weak in my opinion. Like you don't really want to run rocks on Great Tusk. You can run rocks on Napoleon. That definitely fits a move slot every week. But then you're also sliding in Roost and having to be two attacks. Then you have Yancey, which can lay hazards, but I feel like you don't want to really waste hazards with Yancey all too much, but Yancey can't do that. And Weezing to ground a poison that I do not like, especially since if you really want to get rid of toxic spikes, you have to be a grounded poison, which means you just have levitating, uh, neutralizing gas. So I don't really like that. I like some of the offensive pieces you had, but overall, I just felt the team was missing something for me, and I felt like it's forcing itself to do stuff that I don't think it really needs to do. The next coach we talked about was Will Volt, Mr. H himself. And what I overall just didn't like about the team is that he has Pokemon like Heracross and Ogre Pond that set up spikes, which are a great fourth move to put on there if you literally have nothing else to put on there. But I personally do not like offensive spikers. Now, a lot of people could say the same thing about Meowskarada. Meowskarada is technically an offensive spiker. But in my opinion... Miascara can run spikes as a mean to change type, which takes advantage of a matchup in front of it, which benefits it more. It blocks Volt Switch pivoting and also the strong electric attack. So that is why I think when it comes to Miascarada, I don't mind spikes having me in on there because that makes it a ground type, which I think offers a lot more to a team. So there's a difference between that and stuff like Ogre Pond and Heracross. Overall, I think the team has a good defensive synergy, which is really good. I think the speed tier is a bit weird. And I think the offense is a little bit lackluster, but it has good enough offense. I overall just felt the team was okay, but nothing too spectacular in my eyes. Up next, we have Coach Faye of the Mystic Mewtwo's. And again, this team really struggles because it does not have a lot of hazards. Again, Spikes Ogre Pond, don't like that. And it has Rockers Galore from Jirachi all the way down to Don Fan. And I don't like the fact that is your solo spinner. I would have liked something that helped remove hazards or a magic bounce to pair with it. Would have also been very nice. Overall, I felt that the team, it was a little too defensive for my liking. I don't think it was quite offensive. Like, yes, you can make Kamo and Jirachi offensive along with Road and Heat. But from my viewpoint, it just looks defensive to me. And I just felt like it was a little bit of an underwhelming team. But it was better than one of the other teams that we had. Up next was Coach Neji, and I really do like Neji's team. I just think it has just too many pieces clumped together. I don't know if they really fit a roll compression together. I don't know how well they really function as a team together. You're forcing Glimmit to be broad if you really want to have hazards. Corviknight gets rid of your hazards, and obviously you have Core Change or Cinderace, which is an option for hazard removal, but you're also forcing yourself to run Core Change on Cinderace. More importantly, this team also has pretty much no hazard offensive there. The only reason I ranked this team a little higher than FaZe was I love the offensive prowess it has and a really good defensive backbone that it pairs with. But overall, I felt like this team, it really needs better hazard setting, in my opinion. And uh, overall, I just felt like it could have used a little bit. Up next, we have Zombie. And Zombie drafted a really cool team. I really like how the team came together. I do feel like personally, this team looks like half offensive, half bulky. And I don't know if I personally like a draft that's like that. Now, obviously, you can make the bulky Pokemon an offensive Pokemon and vice versa. But I don't like the fact that some Pokemon are, can be almost pigeonholed to be defensive. Like Mesprit, Weezing, Alamola. They're 100% forced to be pigeonholed. Now, Zapdos, I think, can go either way a lot of the times. And same with Hariyama, obviously. But I really don't like the fact that most of the team can be defensive. I think the fact that you're mostly defensive just means you just want more pivoting and just more offense, maybe. But I feel like you're just going to be allowing teams to kind of do what they kind of want. So I personally didn't think this team was all the greatest out of the nines. Because this was six nine teams that I had to go through. And I felt like Zombies was the second lowest. Just because, again, of how I feel like the team is structured. But overall, um, I am a massive fan of Zombie, Mr. 70 Leagues. 70 Leagues. So, respect to him. And I also respect the Ditto pickup. I actually think Ditto in this type of format is a really good pickup in this type, in this tier. Up next, we have Ducky, who is a new coach this season, the so uh, Sutopolis Psyducks. And I really like what he kind of went for here. We're not going to look at the Monk and Torcat because they're not Pokemon. Um, I like what he went here, though. I, went he I like how he went with, like, Life Square Mew to function as utility and um, hazards with the team. 
Um, you obviously can give you a rapid spinner or a potential defogger, along with a rapid spinner, some cycles are, which is great. But I feel like Mew does not want to be a hazard removal option for this team, I feel like. I feel like the potential for setup Mew or utility Mew has so many great mags, so I really don't know if I like having Mew as a hazard option. Um, the offense is a bit is a bit weak for me. Now, Samurai, yes, yeah, it, it hits strong, but I feel like it's going to be your one main breaker. Goldengo can be actually built to be defensive, and it kind of needs set up a little bit to be good. Um, Azu can obviously punch really hard. Ogre Pond can actually hit really hard. Raikou kind of sucks. I'm going to be honest with all you. I don't think it's really good. Cyclozar has great utility, but I feel like it's more going to be utility slash rapid spin instead of just being a breaker. And I do think the webs aspect of the team do add a lot. I think overall, the team is good. I just felt like maybe it could have used maybe a better electric type that was a good breaker, or maybe it could just use something else that could have been really threatening. I think like a defiant Pokemon or a competitive Pokemon would have been a good add to the team to really take advantage of the sticky web aspect of this draft. Up next we have Chef. And Chef had a has a really good team. The only problems I see with his team is that he has Rapid Spin and Sorapagos, his only option to move hazards. He has a greeting down there, but we'll ignore it. I think defensively, this is a really good team. I think offensively, there's really good things. And plus, this is a John Jr. draft just by looking at the first five Pokemon plus Tinkaton. You can't tell me this isn't screwing John Jr. So when he beats John in whatever week they play, I'm going to laugh. And be like, John Jr. beats John Jr.? Thumbnail right there. Um, but overall, I really like Chef's team. Chef has a lot of cool pieces that really pair well together. Obviously, from being around John and watching John. He felt the structure really works, so might as well go with it and try it yourselves, right? But overall, building team is really nice. Could use a little bit better in terms of hazard removal and also hazard setting. But overall, it's a solid team. Up next, we have one of the team captains, Central. I like really where Central went with here. The only complaint I had about Central's team was the defensive synergy with Rotomosh, Incineroar, and probably like Bramblegast or Landorus. Stuff like that. I feel like that's your only reliable way of defense on this team. I don't really know if I really like that option for that, um, but I love the offense of the team. I do think you have decent enough hazard support with a few rockers and spikers and T-spikers. And I also think the removal could be a lot better. I mean, it's Mortal Spin and Ramble and Rapid Spin on Bramble, I guess. Both actually kind of don't want to run hazard removal, so definitely some options there. I also looked at options of spikes from the Oscarada as well. Overall, I felt like this team was really good. However, his co-captain of this team of the Team Rocket Division did a better job than he did. I felt like the option of Double and Burden was really great. Vice Master. I also think the Garchomp fits well for what you wanted to do as an option for hazards. I do say hazards are very limited on this team. I also think the Copperage and Oricorio are very unnecessary picks. I feel like you could have definitely gotten something with a lot better value in the, the point tier you could have gotten from. But I think overall this is a very solid team. It hits very hard. It has decent enough momentum. And it does have some options to really mess with people's heads. So I really think this could be a really solid team by Smaster. Up next we have Denali, who actually drafted a pretty... Oh wait, Denali's down here. Who drafted a really powerful Sun team. Um, the only complaint I had about the Sun team here was the fact that you had your Rapid Spin. I know technically Kasui and Lilligan gets defog, so you have three removal options. But you're not forcing defog. On a Lilligan, and if you are, you're just a bad player. Um, but Mana Buzz definitely think it's a reliable defogger in most matchups, but you do have some options for hazards and spikes with Sandy Shocks and the stealth rockers you have in Torkoal, Bronzong, Necrozma, and Sandy Shocks as well. With also the, the sticky webs option that you do have. I do actually like the option of potential trick room with this team. I think the trick room users being obviously things like the Mana Buzz, the Torkoal. The bronze on itself, even gouging fire with blood drip hollow with the uh room service could be really cool. I think there's definitely a lot of ways you can run this team a little bit, and that's why I really like it. But I felt like the other two teams that we we're talking about did a little bit more better. Plus, again, the hazards are a little weak on this team, but I do think there's enough options here. And also your grounded poisons are I don't think you're really gonna be bringing that, so I think grounded poisons are poison types T spikes are gonna be a problem. The team I went with second was Alphon. I think he has a really cool, interesting rain team. I like how he picked up a user like Keldeo to really take advantage of rain. To hit even harder than it already does. The where it can literally not be Fury clicking on water move and just go for other moves in this matchup. 
Um, it does give you four water types, which I think is a little bit too much. You do have two steel types, which is also a bit of a redundant type, redundancy to have a little bit here. But other than that, you don't have really any other way to <laughs> show your checks. I also think the hazard setting is just a little bit on the four side on things like Overquill and Quagsire. Um, I do think the removal option being defog is not the worst thing. At least you have the option to remove hazards, which I think is really good for this team. Overall, I feel like this team was really good. I think, again, the only thing I would like was maybe a better hazard setting role and also maybe kind of catching up a good amount of the type weaknesses and trying to get to the new knees or something like that. And the team I went with number one here was Sir Blue. I like the option of offense plus the bulk he had. It pairs off so perfectly well. This team is definitely going to be really hard to counter team and counter prep for. The only nitpick I had with this team was just the double poison. I think the double poison is a little bit rough, especially with having a decent ground and fire weakness. But overall, I think this team really fed. Had two reliable spinners. It can definitely be spin options for most games. And if not, one can be more of offensive, the other be spin support. And overall, I just felt like the hazard setting was also decently strong here. And just overall, it's just a good team. The only nitpick I had was just the Persian. But other than that, this team was a 10. Going to Team Star roster, sadly, I did not make Keegan my number 10, my number 12. I had to make Bope my number 12. Just because when it came to Bope's team, the biggest critique I had that caused his rank was no hazard removal. I think hazard removal is very key in draft. Now, obviously, Joey PokeBMD has always stated that you don't need has removal in draft league. And I do believe him. I do believe him. But if you had to be critiquing teams based off of some roles that teams always need to make sure they have, I definitely think that at least not having one option for any type of removal really hurts this team. I also think the hazard setting is a little weak on this team. And also just the option for doing anything with this team is a little rough. But I do like how it can come off offensively and defensively. But just overall, I felt like it really needed more for the structure. Coming in number 11 was Keegan. And I do think Keegan seems not terrible. It's definitely better than his uh, BBR team. I do like his, this team a lot more better than his BBR. I like the defensive synergy he has with Arcanine, Rich Steel, and Screamtail. Uh, biggest critique is that Rapagos is his only hazard removal, which you don't really want to be forcing yourself to run Rapid Spin. And Rock Polish is right there. Um, I think some of the offensive mons he has are pretty decent. They're not the greatest uh, because it's very limited. But I think his defensive synergy is going to be really good for his team. And overall, that's why I liked him about Keegan's team. Uh, up next, I unfortunately put my boy Aurora Draco low in the spectrum because he does have a sand team. And you guys already know I'm a massive fan of sand. I love sand to death. I just felt like it wasn't structured the best time, in my opinion. I feel like Drill might be forced to be a hazard removal option for a lot of drafts. Um, I do think Mana Bus fits on this team really well. I also think the team really lacks hazards. Like, you only have three Stealth Rockers, and only the realistic one you can bring with Stealth Rock is either Titar or Necro in most matches. Ogre Pond, I, like I said, I do not like spikes on a Pokemon like that, and I do not want to see spikes on a Pokemon like that. So, overall, I really liked the team, but I had to rank it low just based on the facts. It was just one of those things, so. Sorry, I had to check a message. But, um, yeah, overall, felt like the team did great, but it's what it is. No. Oh. Uh, who we got to? Now we got to Armenia, which I think we would stop, we were stopped at, possibly. Actually, we didn't talk about Armenia's just yet, actually. So we're actually going to start going into a little bit more of the deeper discussions here. Now, Armenia made transactions. I don't know if these transactions got updated on the dock or not. But, uh, overall, Armenia's team, I felt was really good. It was tied for the worst team in the league. Um, I decided to make it the best out of the worst, though, just because I liked her, their team a lot better than... Oh, I know. Our Mania was, was, a, was a nine. She They were a part of, of the group of four players that were nine. Out of the nines, I think she had... She, I keep saying she. I'm so sorry. You're probably a he or you like to be called they or them. I apologize. I just think when I think of Armenia, it just sounds like a female name to me. So I do apologize. I don't mean to assume. 
But um, I do like Armenia's draft. I think with the healing with support from Latias, it's really good. I like some of the defensive synergy they have with Insin plus Jirachi. Great Dusk is really great. I think having a Defogger and a Rapid Spinner does really well here. Uh, Claude's Iron being your only form of hazards, though, is a little bit of a weakness for this draft. Because other than that, you only have Stealth Rocks with Great Tusk. And I don't really know if you really need a second ground type. It does give you a water immunity with water absorb to pair off with the Decidueye, Azumarill, and the Latias for a water resist. But overall, I just felt like that wasn't really needed. I, and I think just overall, this team is really good. I just don't think it really meshes that well together. I also think the speed tiers are like, are like actually decently like length out. But other than that, I just think the main thing I had was that the hazard settings are getting really pressured. And just overall, I just felt like it's going to be a little bit lackluster. And this team is a little bit, like, mixed again, where it's half offensive, half defensive, leaning towards the defensive side. But overall, I really love Armenia's team, and I hope they do well this season. I hope we actually get to face them. I don't think I do or do or not. And I would really like the opportunity to play them, because it would be a really good time and just a really fun match. Uh, up next, we've got one of the co-captains of Team Star. It's Star himself. Of the Pocket Monsters University. Enroll today. Star gives out free tutoring sessions on the first day of enrollment. He told me that himself, so I'm going to plug that for him. You're welcome, Star. <laughs> but we have Iron Bottle Treads, Heart Flame, Hydreigon, Weezing, Globro, Slutterous, Ampros, Galarian, Zapdos, and Cutie Fly. I'm going to ignore the Cutie Fly unless he's that desperate for webs. Um, he does have a Defog and a Rapid Spinner, which I really like. Um, I really, again, it's a really weak hazard setting team, but what makes it a nine is just the offense star has with bundled treads, heart flame and Zapdos, great support potential with things like slow bro, thunderous and wheezing, just overall, very good mod. The only weak thing about this again, like I said, it's just the hazard setting and again, forcing a Pokemon like Galarian wheezing to be neutralizing gas to be a grounded poison. Overall, I do like Star's team, but I feel like there's these small little nitpicks that could make it a little bit better. But overall, Star is the dean of Pocket Monsters University, so he knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, he would not be the dean of the, of the school if he wasn't, so. Uh, but anyways, uh, Star has a really good team. And I actually get to face Star, spoilers, for week number two, and I'm super excited. I have never had the opportunity to face Star before, and I don't think I've ever knew about Star before, John. And then obviously watching Uranium and getting to watch Star's content and everything. And honestly, Star and I have, we've kind of clicked a little bit. We haven't got a chance to talk as much and get to hang out. But I really like Star. He's a really good pal. And I really am looking forward to finally having the opportunity to face him. Might be one of the few rare times we fight, but I'm definitely looking forward to such a good matchup here. Even though I think he might kick my butt. Uh, up next, we have Seth, a.k.a. the Pokemon Professor. Someone that I am actually undefeated against. So if Seth, we face off, I want to keep that undefeated streak alive against you. Just saying. Uh, I really do like some of the options he has on his team. Again, I hate offensive spikers like Heracross. I don't really like that option. So you have like one spiker, one rocker. You have one option for T-spikes. You do have the ground of poison. I do think the option of the snow with Vaxcalibur is great. Rapids with Blastoise is amazing, but I don't like Blastoise being the solo option for hazard removal on this team. I think defensively it pairs decently well. I think offensively can do really strong. Um, but what I think it lacks a little bit for this on my end of the spectrum here is that I think it's just going to be just kind of gimmicky and kind of just knowing what this team is going to be doing. And um, just overall, oh, you know, he has Dom Fan as a second spinner. I'm stupid. Never mind. I take back the hazard removal option. I think also the fact that screens pair really well in this team. Overall, it's a solid team, but I just felt like it was a little bit lower ranked on the other uh, two, on the other nine point team. And the best nine point team, the nine out of ten team I had was the Hail no, no, Holly Fox Molaheads in Coach Eden um, with Miastra, Lando, Clap, Infernium, Psychosaur, and Metagross, Overcoil, and Anime, and Poltergeist. I like what they went with here. I will say, I. Do not like cycles are being your solo removal. And I also think your ha hazard setting is a little low-key weak. Now, obviously, Landorus and Fernape can definitely run Stealth Rocks, but I feel like both of them don't want to do that. I think Metagross is a perfect rocker to run every single week. 
And I do think Miel Scrata can fit spikes every now and again, which I think is decent. But Overquill being your main spiker for the team, I feel like it's going to be a little bit of a burden there. But I do love the option to potentially try to go things with Manaphy with, with uh, Tail Glow. Shell Smash Poltergeist. Like, I do think there's some ways to move around this team. I think offensively, this team is very terrifying. Not too scary defensively, but offensively, it hits really hard. It's easily, decently fast, and it can definitely do a lot of work. So, very strong team by Eater. Up next, we get actually four teams tied at 9.5 out of 10. And the team I felt did the weakest of the 9.5s, and is going to be our fifth ranked coach, is going to be Bick. For the Bloodman Bears with Latios, Weavile, Kababo, Memo Swine, Porgon, Seed, Sevillion, Tender Curl, Skarmory, Dustnor, Rotom, Mo. Defensively, I think there's a really good synergy around this team, which I think is really good. Offensively, there's really good offense here. Um, there's two Rapid Spinners in Kerquavel and Tentacruel, which I think is really nice. I think the only thing that really made this team kind of lackluster for me is that, again, hazards are very limited on this draft. You have one rock, you have two rockers in Skarmory and Memo Swine. Now, obviously, Mamoswine can be designated as a rocks knee Pokemon, but I don't like that of Mamoswine. I just feel like unless you're getting a good lead to get free rocks up, Mamoswine's just being used as a tool to just get rocks up and then die. I don't really like that. I also think the fact that this team is... I don't know. There's just... like I just feel something off with it, but I think overall it's a fantastic draft. And like I said, I think only the slight little bit of just the nitpick from me is what causes it to not to be a 10. But overall, I think Vic drafted a fantastic team and uh, did really well with this draft. Uh, coming up, number four, and this one is going to be my man Kyle and the Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I love that team name and logo. It's so perfect. Never lose that logo. But we have Goldengo, Kiram, Slokin, Bramagus, Glamora, Palma, Rabami, Tinglu, Iron Dragos, and Beartech. I like that he fit a snow route on his team, and he actually drafted really solid hazard options. Obviously, Ram Bramble and Glamora is your removal. I don't really like, and that was like the only real nitpick I saw from this draft. But overall, I love the webs offense this has. I love just overall the momentum you have and just the pivoting and just the offense alone. You do Kind of lack a little bit of defense, but if you can overwhelm your opponent with offense, defense doesn't mean anything. So overall, love the team. And again, the only slight nitpick I had was just your removal option. But other than that, it's just a fantastic team. Now we get to the top three. Number three of these coaches, are we're going to go to Lunar and the East Coast Empoleons with Rory Moon, Iron Moth, Glyscore, Empoleon, and Nihilib, Serena, Uxi, Alone, Ninetales, Thunders, and Uridan. Again, we're going to ignore the ingredient. I love the Avail offense of this team. This is disgusting. Um, I think your only option is Spin of Serena. Don't know if I really like that as an option. But I do love the fact that you can kind of hazard stack here. It's not the greatest hazard stack, though, because there's very minimal rockers. You have Glyscore and Empoleon, which are probably going to be your main rockers, along with Uxie. I think Uxie can fit rocks around again. You do have T-Spikes with both Moth and Gliscor, so you kind of can fit um, Gliscor to have a little bit more coverage, especially with having access to Spikes now this gen. Um, so overall, I think defensively, this team pairs really well, but with the Veil offense it has with Roaring Moon, Iron Moth, and Nihilab, and even things like Thunderous and Gliscor to an extent, just do fantastic. And I am really looking forward to seeing how Lunar does. Lunar, I think, finished 7-1 and one last season in Team Lou. And I don't know if they won or not, but they were definitely a strong contender in the playoffs last season. So definitely looking forward to seeing what Lunar does. And believe it or not, and John, I swear I didn't do this on purpose. I honestly give Oboe's team a 9.5. And here's the only critique I had about Owen's team. Your only removal is Torkoal. I... I don't care what people say about Halucha. Unless this is a Goldango matchup, there's no reason Halucha should ever be defogged. But regardless, I love how he went two modes with this team. He went Terrain plus Sun, which I think is going to be forcing so much prep. Now, do I think he has enough pieces to make it where Terrain and Sun can kind of bounce back and forth in certain matchups? Yes and no. I think there can be some weeks where Gouging Fire and Wake can fit outside the sun. 
I do think he has really good hazard options with Sandy Shocks and Frost Slash and Earthworm. Again, the only biggest critique I had with Oboe's team was just his removal. I think his removal was the only thing I saw a problem with. And I think removal is pretty big when you have a team like this. Now, again, people will say I'm hating on the Halucha because Halucha does have defog. But I really think when you have Halucha, you don't have defog on. If you have Halucha without any form of terrain or anything like that, then yes, I think it's a lot more fair to say Halucha can run defog and be able to have hazard removal for the option. But other than that, I don't look at Halucha as a defogger. I don't even look at Torkoal as rapid spinner. So, um, We'll have to see how that goes for Oboe, but I really like his draft, and I think he's going to actually try it. And we actually get to face Oboe, I think, week seven. So that is going to be really exciting. Oboe also has not for being me in draft, but he actually probably has a team to where he can finally get his first win over me. I actually really think he does. As I, there's so, so much that I can't even take care of on this team. I'm not going to explain what, though, but I just know Owen can. Oboe is definitely going to really have the matchup against me when it comes down to it. But. Overall, I'm really happy for Robo's draft. I think it's really good. And coming in, the only other number 10 out of 10 team, and that is Coach Lost Lotto of the Twin Leaf Town Turtwigs with the cutest team name. And look at these guys. Look at them. Look at your face. Look at them. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> I love the offense on this team. I love how it balances its bulk really well. It has three hazard options, hazard removal options in Core Chain Cinderace, Rapid Spin, and Defog which is really good. I love that it punishes defoggers with things like Defiant, Passimian, which is really great. It even punishes defog on things like Enamorous when Enamorous can take advantage of Contrary because Contrary technically can be allowed for the boost that it gets, so it's not technically cheating. Um, but I really like that. I think the hazard setting is actually pretty solid. You have three spikers across the board. You have two stealth rockers across the board. And you honestly have a Colossal that could just do both. But you also fit Garchomp actually with one hazard every single week. And then Colossal can fit it. Or Fish fits it. I think also defensively, this team has really good defensive synergy. I think offensively, could use a little bit more work offensively. But overall, I think Lotto's team really came together well. And I think they drafted really well. And that is why they're my other top 10 team. So now we get into the Magma roster. Now this is where... The two of the lowest scores were placed was in Magma. One of these coaches, I understand why they'll have the rank that they did because it was explained to me how and kind of it went down. And then the other one, let's be honest, he doesn't, he, let's be honest, it's just a meme at this point, so I got to live up the meme. Plus, I generally didn't think his team was all that great. So coming in at number 12, four. Magma is Jamal, and I don't think anyone's surprised that it's Jamal. I don't know what I just did there. Uh, <laughs> uh, is Jamal. And, I mean, I don't hate some of the things Jamal has on his team. I don't like the fact that your only default op removal option is a Corviknight. I do think there's cool aspects of Webs, but you don't really have too much that takes advantage of besides Jirachi, Ogre Pond, and Weavile. Like, Gardevoir kind of can, but it's not too offensive with it. Also, I think his hazard setting is a little weak. It's okay for what he wants. But I just feel like also this team is just kind of really random. Don't know if it really matches that well together in concept. And just overall, I mean, it's Jamal, so we have to give him the last spot in everything we do. So, But I do think Jamal does still, does still have a decent team still. And then coming in at number 11, the only other uh, ranked number 17 is going to be a buff cat. We're going to ignore the Stantler there. Um, but we have Great Tusk, Ogre Pond, Heart Flame, Manaphy, Dragonite, Raikou, Iron Crown, Lone Mug, Rabombi, and Mimikyu. Again, I mean, you're forcing Rapid Spin on your Great Tusk every single week. You literally are. You're forcing Boots on Dragon Animals every single week then, and you're potentially forcing Boots on Rabombi every single week. I also think there's very much no hazard set setting on this team besides Sticky Webs and the Stealth Rocks and the potential spikes you can run with Ogre Pond which just makes the team a lot worse. Now, I do understand and know um, from outside information that Wa that uh, Buff didn't really get to draft anything he really wanted on his team. But he made the best of everything he wanted. And uh, I really hope Buffcat does really good season. I feel like I faced Buffcat or known Buffcat. 
from other leagues. So I'm really hoping he does really well this season, and hopefully he can definitely uh, give some fight for Team Magma this season. Up next, he's the three-time champ, but yet I don't think his draft ranks is what three times looks like. But then again, he's beaten me, to be granted, with a little bit of luck. Um, but we have, um, Iron Bundle, Glow King, Heatran, Glyscore, Zarud, Drago, Little Mola, Deancey, Reggie, and Girder. Your only hazard options are a Reggie Lucky and a Girder. They are irrelevant at this point. Your only hazard options is a Deancey and a Glyscore, and even arguably a Heatran. A little bit weak there, honestly. And I don't know, there's just something a little gimmicky about the team that I don't really like. I do think the fact to have Bundle paired with Gloking with the Chili Reception for Blizzard Spam is, I think, is pretty funny. But overall, I do think SJ's team just, it ranks a little bit low. But this is SJ. He's won three championships, and he just knows what he's doing. He made the comeback of a century in Season 2 to win the championship. So, if there's anyone that can take any team and win with it, it's SJ. Up next, we have everyone's favorite Lego Maego. It is Lego himself. And what I really didn't like about the team was the fact that he did have a couple of typings that he already had. Um, I also don't really like the option. I do think the option with Hazard Ring plus Blast Toys for Hazard Removal was decent. But there's no other Hazard setting on this team besides Sticky Webs and Spikes and the Rocks. Like your only Rocker is Landorus, which I think is really bad, honestly. Um, I think your offense pair decently well. I don't think your offense and defense match that well. And just overall, I didn't feel like the team had a lot going for it, in my opinion. But overall, I do think he has a solid team. Um, I don't remember. I feel like I faced Lego before somewhere else besides JJBL. I mean, I don't think I faced him at all yet. But I think there was a Leno League I faced him at, but I don't remember. But he has a solid team, and I definitely know he can do well with it if he plays it well. Up next is going to be Mountain Man of the Sulean Edge with Meowskrout, Baxcalibur, Kukwabble, Thunderous, Nendigross, Clodzart, Incineroar, Weezing, Nismag, and Indeedee. Now, there's a, there's a couple of problems I have with this team. I feel like the Indeedee is a kind of a useless pick, if you want my honest opinion. Also, there's several repeated typings on here, which I don't think reside. You have two Dark types. You have two Psychic types. You have two Poison types. I really don't like repeated typings, especially when it's done multiple times or on. Now, be granted, with the secondary type, they do a lot of different things. Like, Meowskrow is more offensive, with Incineroar is a little bit more defensive. Clodzar is a lot more fat and annoying with Hazards, and Weezing is just fat and annoying with Will-O-Wisp. And then Indeedee is just an Indeedee, and Metagross is just cool. Um, but overall, I just feel like the team synergistically just doesn't fit a lot of things, with also having options of Psychic Terrain on this team. You know, stopping things like Bullet Punch, Aqua Jet, Ice Shard, Sucker Punch, I don't really like. That is your option. And just overall, I felt like the team, like, it's a solid team. It's not bad. I just think there's not a lot of cohesiveness from it. And I also think the hazard setting is really kind of weak besides having Claude's Ire and potentially Meow. But overall, I mean, Mountain Man's is interesting. I get to face off with Mountain Man this season. First time I'm ever facing him, so I'm very much looking forward to a first-time matchup. It should be a lot of fun. Up next, we're taking on Coach Pep. Pep. Um, very interesting team. It definitely fits the role of kind of bulky offense, which I think definitely fit the roles of this team. Uh, Iron Treads and the Talent Flame is your removal option. I think it's pretty decently solid. Um, I think the option of screens for this team is very dangerous. Especially with things like a belly drum Hariyama. Um, hazard setting is very weak. I'm going to be honest. You have Stone, Stone Axe slash Stealth Rock in Cleavor. You have Rocks in Iron Treads. And you have Spikes in Coral Fish with T-Spikes. That's literally it. And I really think this team would have benefited from another hazard setter. Something like a Smeargle would be really good on this team. Um, I also think a probably like... Maybe a trick room? No, maybe not a trick room option. That's gonna stupid. I don't know. There's maybe a little bit more something with this team. I don't know. There's just something about the team I just don't like, and I can't really put my finger on why I don't like it. But just overall, I felt like this team 
it's solid, but it's just missing maybe another hazard center for spikes potentially. Because you're not gonna really be running quillfish a lot. But overall, do like the team. It's just gonna be it's just it's just looking weird for me. That's just me. Up next we take on the Yamba Blues here with K Han, which I'm gonna assume I get right every time, but I don't know I'm gonna be mad. They went with the Sun Route here, except this is the Sun Route with Venusaur instead of Walking Away. Paired with Zapdos, which isn't the worst thing because Zapdos can rely on Heat Wave to kind of hit a lot of things. Rillaboom is pretty interesting on this team when you have Venusaur. You have two spinners in Donphan and Torkoal, which is a little bit bad because Donphan is the only one that really wants to spin. Torkoal really doesn't. Um, Registeel, Grafia I kind of like as a unburdened budget pick, which I think is really good, but I don't know. I mean, Rillaboom with Grassy Terrain, I don't know if that really fits for the whole theme of this team. But I can see the vision of it, though. Um, but overall, I think Khan's team is very good. It does a lot for what he wants with it. And of all the teams that I ranked from 8.5 from Khan to SJ, I felt Khan's team was the best just because of the Sun team aspect of it. And just overall, it does really a lot of work. I really wish we would have saw some spikers on this team, though. Spikers would have probably made this the best draft, hands down. But I just generally don't think it really matches for what I'm looking for in his draft. But overall, it's a really good team. You're not going to believe this, guys. But coming in at number five is John Jr. That's right. He's not number one. He's number five. Um, first off, we're ignoring the muck pick. The muck is bad. Um, he does have a really good defensive core with having things like Fable, Tentacruel, and Chestnut, and even having the defensive options of Blando plus King Gambit, and also Latios with support with Healing Wish. I do think he actually has some really solid hazard removal with two spinners. His hazard options, though, are very limited. Like, he has T-Spikes with Tentacruel, Spikes in Greninja and Chestnut, and Stealth Rock in Landorus and King Gambit in Fable. So he's very much pressured on Interopolis. He's very pressured on his hazards. But John has really good pivoting, which is really good. He has some really solid models that can go physical and or defensive, which is really good. And he just overall has really good support options for this team. And believe it or not, folks, me and John are going to battle it again this season. But not only are we going to battle it out, we're battling week one. So that is going to be game of the week right there. I really want to finally get my first ever win against John. Some of my main draft league things I want to do before I end my draft league career is one, to beat John, because John's the only draft league player when it comes to the whole history I've known players from. He's the only person that is undefeated against me, and I want to get my one win. Because I know there's not going to be a ton of times John and I will have this opportunity to play a lot, especially unless I get into the Wi Fi grind. So I always look forward to any chance to face John. I think last time we faced off, it was a lot. Like it's probably one of our closest battles. And it honestly just came down to loaded dice being a fraud item. Um, but overall, I'm very excited to face John week one. I think we both have good matchups into each other. But I feel like I have a slightly better one. But overall, very excited for week one. And I hope you all will be too. And uh, John's also just a really good friend and brother. I've known him for like almost eight years, I think, at this point since I joined Draft League. And um, it feels really nice to have him back in the back in the draft scene. And it's also just bad to get back and talking with him again. It's just really awesome. Now with John's plug and love out of the way, we have ITRIM or ITRIM. I don't know how they want to be called. And I really like this team. This looks like a John Jr. team if I've ever seen one. Uh, this team is very fat and offensive. This is very much annoying. Roy Moon and I live in the Cross, uh, Gilmora, Sandy Shocks, Skarmory, Vaporeon, Snorlax, Moonspot, and Avalog. Do not like the fact that your only removal is Avalog plus Glamora. When Glamora is not going to do it, and Avalog looks like your sole removal. So I do think that really is a big hit on the why I don't think this team is the why this team took a definitely big hit in terms of it. But what holds it at nine is just really good hazard options between Glamora, Sandy Shocks, and Skarmory. Good, solid defensive team synergy, and also things like Tailwind support from Whimsicott. Just overall, this team really hit a lot of checkboxes for me, and it does really, really well for what it does. And it's just a super strong team, and I really look forward to seeing what this team is going to do going further into the season.
Coming number three is going to be, he's actually down here somewhere, Dan Lex. And I really like what they did with the team. Um, I like the fact that they have a mini snow option with Sandslash, but I feel like that was kind of just a unnecessary pick. Because now it gives you a secondary steal. Um, but you have decent hazards with having Ting Lu. But again, very limited on what else you can do. It's kind of almost gimmicky with having two ice types. And just a massive rock weakness to this team besides having Tink, Sand, and well, mostly Tink and uh, Tin. With Ting and Tink. <laughs> tink, Tink. <laughs> Definitely think that the weaknesses are going to really pile up there for sure. But I overall think the pivoting can be really good. I think some of the offensive builds you can go with this is really good. And some of the defensive builds can also be really well. And I think overall Dan just built a really solid team. And I think that's why I ranked him number three. And then number two, we got everyone's favorite, Bling Bling himself. It's whatever, a.k.a. And, AK Antonio, a.k.a. he's just called everything under the sun. And I actually really like Ant's team. I think the only big downgrade of Ant's team is that he's forcing potential removal with Cinderace and a hit on top. But him on top is the shit, so that is a good thing. He's got some really good defensive synergy with having Uxie, Dejun, Sparse, Petron, and great offensive synergy with things like Garchomp, Cinderace, Teldeo, and Azumarill. Don't really know why you're going double water. I guess Azu kind of functions as your bulky water a little bit. And Shaman kind of being that mixed role, potentially. But overall, I really think Ant's team comes together really well, and I think it's just overall a solid team. Um, actually, I'm going to do something real quick, guys, and I'll pause the recording, and I'll be right back. And we're back. Sorry about that. I had to go eat dinner. I had some nice and delicious pork. Tasty and spicy. So I'm going to be drinking a lot of Pepsi, which, by the way, I'm not sponsored, but Pepsi, sponsor me. But now we get to the number one team of the Magmar division, and that is going to be Father Wing. And I just really love this build, man. Sand with Boulder is so insanely good. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry, I was having a little bit of some burps there, so if you heard that, I apologize. Like I said, I hate the option of spikes for Wellspring, but if it has to fit on a team, it fits on this. I love every aspect of what this team is trying to go for and what it's trying to do. I love how offensively paired well defensively it is. It's just so good. I really love everything about this draft. It's so great, and just there's no bad flaw to it. The only reason I didn't put this at number 10 was because of the hazards. Very minimum, if not no hazards, to really support this team. And that is the only reason I did not give this team a 10. Otherwise, this would have been my third 10 of the season. Really would have been my third 10. 100%. But I think with having also, you know, just no haz real hazard options for this team, besides so Stealth Rock, really, really hurts it. Really, really hurts it. But now we get to the best team division in the whole league. That is going to be Plasma Division. Excuse me. And my cat will not leave me alone. And I don't know why she will not stop. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and talk about who had the best draft and who had the worst. Coming in from the bottom of the barrel. And I really think this just comes down to how the synergy really works for the team. And just how I look at it in general. Now, before anyone says anything, yes, I do understand that if Plasma is watching, I could have voiced an opinion and I could have voiced some things. And that could have been a great team player right there. But also, I work a lot, so I can't really sit down and discuss teams. And again, I think everyone in Team Plasma has a great team. Everyone in Team Plasma did not get a 7. Everyone got an 8 or an 8.5 as the lowest score. So if anything, Team Plasma is the tied for the only other division that didn't have a 7 in their division. Boom! Sorry to the other 7s out there. 
<laughs> but um, real quick, so we're gonna talk with SJM or Yam, whatever they like to go with. Um, their team. I think the only downside I saw to this team was limited hazards. Like, yeah, you have the anti that can set up spikes and either be your rocker as well with Iron Treadles being your rocker. I I just don't really see the idea for it in terms of hazards. I think offensively you have a really good momentum and just really good rope breakers. I do think you lack a little bit of a defensive presence that's not just forced to be the anti, a mug. The potential Rillaboom Prim and even Treads and Hands. Like, I really think you struggle defensively to check some things, potentially. Um, But overall, I do think you have a good team. I'm a massive fan of Iron Hands. And um, overall, I just... I don't know. There's just something about the team. I feel like if we could have gotten another Spiker of some sort, that would have been really good. And maybe something better than a Mischievous, potentially, for one point or whatever we had left over. But overall, I do think this is a solid team. Up next, we have the person next to him, Igpa Atenley, a.k.a. Nate. Uh, Nate's team, won't lie, it's a little weird because he has two steel types. The only reason I liked this team slightly more than SJM's team, I feel like in terms of its synergy, it kind of matched relatively well, um, offensively and defensively. But really looking at this team, it really struggles a lot. You're really putting the pressure on Earthworm for hazards, which I think is a big problem. With the whole crook. It's almost like the same situation with SJM's team and um, Igpa's team, is that they both have two mods that are only reliable hazard-wise and don't do anything else with the team, you know? Magnezone, I really don't think of there. I think you can get a better electric type from 9 points and below. And also the Oricorio, I just don't think it fits on the team, honestly. But overall, I think uh, Igba could have a hidden team. Um, your only removal, though, is Coquavel, so that's going to be a little concerning. But there could be some plans for potential Trick Room here, which could be cool. If we see Choice, Banded, Trick Room, Earthworm, I'll make this the best team in the league. I want to see that Earthworm set do so well. <laughs> but yeah, that's Igba's team. Coming in at number 10 is going to be Coach Window of the Pittsburgh Pincers. And I just think this team's a little too defensive for my liking, honestly. Your only removal option is Mandibuzz. You don't really have any hazards besides two Stealth Rockers. Three Stealth Rockers where only one, if maybe two of them, are a reliable option. And one Spiker, which you don't want to force spikes on every single week. I think... What makes it a little bit better is that the defensive synergy from what your defensive pieces have can pair well with the limited offense that you do have on your team. You have decent enough momentum options, which is really good. But just overall, I just I just don't really like how the team is structured. That's just my opinion. My opinion about it. So, but just overall, I do like this team. I just wish it had a little bit more of an off one more one or two more offensive pieces, which I know Rotom can be, but. Rotom kind of fits better in potentially that defensive pivot role. Coming number nine, and I hate to do this to him because my fellow, he's my fellow Iowan brethren and fellow Evolution brethren. He even drafted me on his team. I'm sorry to do this to you, Cole. Well, we got my man Cole as ice with the iced out city. Oh, I'm so sad I had to do this to him. The, one of the biggest gripes I have is that Terrapagos is your sole rapid spinner and remover of hazards. Uh, Tinglu gives you your only real hazard setter for this team besides potential stealth rocks with the Terrapagos and T-Spikes with Iron Moth. But that's it. There's a decent enough defensive synergy, but I also think the Galar Articuno, it's kind of a weird mod to have, especially in Noterra. And even maybe Breloom to an extent. Because you didn't have a ground resist that wasn't named Rotom Wash. So maybe that's why you grabbed it. But I don't know. But I do think this team has a lot of great offensive synergy. With some good reliable defensive synergy between the Tinglu, Wash, and uh, Nysuni and Ludra. But just overall, as much as I love my brother from the Corn State. Uh, it's just, it's a little bit of a weaker team. But I do like his team nonetheless. Coming up right next to him is Trey, and now I know for a fact, Trey, I'm going to say this right now, Trey is an absolute trooper. 
there was actually one Pokemon that he actually wanted to get, but someone purposely or kind of was talking him into getting to pick a different one. And Trey really wanted that Mon in his team, but the coach didn't kind of want to let go of it and wanted to pick it. So Trey, even though he didn't want to, he decided to go ahead and give up the pick and then gave up a whole bunch of picks so everyone could be happy with their teams and he'd be stuck with whatever leftover stuff he could get. So I got to give a massive shout out to Trey. He's one of our team captains and he really took a bullet for the team by willing to just have what was left over on the board. So I give a lot of respect to Trey and uh, I'm definitely going to hopefully do him proud this season. Uh, but I also, I don't think he walked away with a bad team. I think the only thing he walked away was very limited hazards besides having with Overquill and Necrozma as your main form of hazards. But the Sun option with a scary Trick Room option is very terrifying. I love Ursaluna. It's such a great Pokemon. And I think overall it's a very solid Mon. Um, I think the fact that we get another Gaijin Fire Awake with Venusaur, the Trifecta, Fire, Water, Grass, Core, Sun, y'all. <laughs> um, but I do think that Double Poison is a little bit redundant on the typing here because now you miss yourself massively weak to ground um, with your only ground resist being Corviknight. But I really have faith in Trey, and I know Trey, through all these adversities and all the struggles he had with the drafting, I just know my captain is going to do work this season. Coming up next, we got everyone's favorite Mingo Mangoes. Mingo themselves with the Backstab of Sloking, Trying Crew Floor with Samurai, Ogre Pond, Azul, Skarmory, Feather Divinity, Sweet Tooth, Galvanter, Regigigas. Now, the Regigigas, I really don't know why you have that on the team. I'm going to be completely honest. this. But one thing about this draft that I did not like but yet I ranked it decently high, which maybe was an oversight on my opinion. Maybe I should have swapped potentially Trey with here and then Cole with them possibly. And maybe it was a bit of a mistake on my end, but I have my keeping my ranking as is. But I think what made me like this team a lot was the, like obviously the synergy with having Glow King, Backscalibur, Spike support from Hisuian Samurai and Skarmory, the bulk that you have on your team, which is super fat. I do think the multiple typings, again, is a little bit redundant. I don't know why you have that. But it does give you a lot of momentum, some movement, and overall just a decent defensive wall. I think web support looks also super strong for this team. And yeah, just overall I felt the team was really good. Again, no hazard removal is a big red flag for me. Yet, I rank this team high, and I'm going to keep my team ranks the way they are, even though maybe in hindsight, I should have ranked this one probably below Cole and Trey, potentially. But my decision has to stand, and I wouldn't be a rightful person if I changed my decision. So my decision will still stand as it is. Coming up next, we have the other team captain of Team Plasma, Noah, a.k.a. Shattered Backwards. That is exactly what his name is. He has confirmed it. Um, he has Goldengo, Wellspring, Wilva, Gliscor, Lycan, Guard Z, Tenna, Michael, Imaluze. Imaluze is irrelevant. We will not talk about that Pokemon. This team is is a uh, uh, kind of iffy for me. Like I do, I see the direction he's trying to go with Hazard sacking, with webs, with having removal in Tenacruel, and then having Goldengo to block. Any type of form of removal. But, I mean, it's kind of, I don't know. I just, there's something about it that just looks weird to me. But I think the web's offense, though, with having things like Wellspring, Weavile, Lycanroc, Gardevoir, PZ, is really, really good. Um, decent enough defensive synergy on the team as well, which I think is really good. And just overall, I felt it was really good. I just think on paper, it just looks weird to me on this draft. I don't know why. It just does. But overall, Noah drafted a great team, and I think he's going to do really well with this team. Coming up, I think we actually have pretty much... Oh, wait, no, we have one team down here. We pretty much have ranked... Oh, no, we have another two. They're wrong. <laughs> we have two teams left up here. 
But now we're going to start tackling the teams up here and again. And up next, we got Coach Bleedle here. And Bleedle's team has Great Tusk, Ogre Pond, Hard Flame, Manaphy, King Gambit, Thunderous, Rabombi, Bronzong, Reggie Drago, Quillfish, and Dash Bun. Now, Bleedo also was kind of in that position where he had to kind of just draft whatever was left over as well. Since everyone kind of submitted their draft plans already, and actually I committed their teams. However, I do think Bleedo walked away with a pretty interesting team. I do think the struggles of having Great Tusk as your solo rabbit spinner is a little is a little cautious, but you do have decent hazard support with Sicky Webs, good reliable rockers, one spiker, which I feel like another spiker could have fit this team a little bit more. Um, I do think the speed tiers are pretty fine for what they are. Um, I do love the fact that Reggie Drago can be a massive threat. I mean, massive Reggie Drago stand out there as well. Overall, I think this team hits actually pretty damn hard and can take some solidly good defensive. I love the fire immunity with Dashbon as well. So overall, I think this is a solid team. They don't really hate it. I think maybe there could have been like one or two things changed possibly, but overall... Solid team by Bleedo. And I know he had a Wagon and Noah and maybe Trey as well that helped him finish this build. So, And speaking of Wagon, we got Wagon next. He actually told that he wanted to build around Greninja. So he grabbed Lando, Bolt, Glamora, Metagross, Ogre, Comfey, Hariyama, Ursaring, Driftblim, and Cutie Fly. Again, we're going to ignore the Cutie Fly. It's only coming if he really likes a webs matchup here. Um, but overall... I think Wagon's draft is quite interesting. Um, I like the Driplum. It does give him an actual decent defog answer for a lot of teams. It does now kind of give him his main rapid, his main form of removing hazards, along with Mortal Spin from Glamora. So his hazard removal, I'll be honest, is very weak. His hazard setting, though, is also low-key a little weak. He only has two stealth rockers on his team. He does have two spikers, technically three if you count Ogre Pond. And a T spiker, but I think you're not gonna force yourself to run spikes on Ogre Pond unless you're that desperate. And also, if you think that's the only type of defensive Ogre Pond set that you really want to run, but I do love the Hariyama. I love the Ursa Ring. Ursa Ring is always such a coded pick, and I think just offensively it hits a lot harder. I think I would have been a little bit better with some more offense, in my opinion. If I know that you can have Ursa Ring, Hariyama be offensive. But I just think on paper, when I look at this team, the only offensive threats I see are Greninja, Lando, Raging, Metagross, and Ogre Pond. Anything below that doesn't look that threatening to me. But overall, Wagon drafted a pretty solid team, and that's why I rank him number four. Now, I rank myself number three. Now, you may be asking yourself, like, oh my god, he ranked himself so high. Oh my god, he's got a big ego. He's got a big head. Listen, I generally think my team, even though it's not the team I planned it out in my head, I think my team's actually really super good. Really super good. But I don't think it's the perfect team. My team is really good for the fact that I have really good fast pivots, which is really good. I have great support with Lottie House, with Healing Wish, and also being able to do with screens. I have really good resistances on my team. I have Hazard Removal with Sizzle, which is really good. I have good wall breakers. I have good setup shenanigans. And healing and with the healing with support from Lias to help keep Annihilate healthy, keep Meow Sharada healthy. I think the only thing about my draft that is going to be a problem is handling grounds. I think grounds are going to be a little bit more of a decent check, if not a problem for my draft. But overall, I do think my team can match up pretty well in most teams out there. Besides maybe weather matchups, but Regardless, I really think my team came along. I have really a good ha hazards option with having all the hazards with Todd's Iyer, good reliable rockers in Tinkaton, and a reliable spiker in the Oscar if I need so. And just, I felt like the team has good speed synergy, which is really great. It has really good bulk and offense. And I just think overall, it's a really great team. I think if there's only one thing it would have changed, is would it maybe try to fit a good reliable spinner that would have fit on teams a little bit more? Or maybe having a little bit more. I'll be like another good breaker for the team, possibly. That's not just Meow, Annihilate, and Thunderous, and then Kazoo and Arcanine, even though I know uh, Latios can be, but Latios is a little bit more of like a good defensive utility support Pokemon. But just overall, I felt like my team was really good. Coming number two. And this was a very close race, but I'm going to give number two, unfortunately, to Dragagon. And now I say unfortunately just because, you know, I'm a Sand guy. 
I love sand. Take a drink every time I said I said I love sand. <laughs> Probably have four drinks right about now. Actually, technically more since I repeated it. I love sand. <laughs> uh, we have Roy Moon, Zapdos, Extra Drill, Infernix, Guitar, Screamtail, Volcanion, Chestnut, and Weezing. I think it's really well supported with sand. I think it does really well. Uh, Roy Moon is just really good. It's really going to check a lot of things that can be kind of more of a hindrance and persistence. Zapdos plus Drill has always been a try and true combo since Gen 6 slash Gen 7. Infernape, you can never go wrong with a really good fighting type slash fire type. It can really check for grass types. Uh, Streamtail, great defensive support piece for the team, which is really great. Volcanion, again, just shut down potential waters and also just be a really good breaker for grass types and opposing grounds. Chestnut, really good defensive synergy for waters. And spike support, which finally we see a proper spiker for this team. Be granted, they only have three, like four stealth rockers that realistically all don't really want to run it, except maybe Creamtail and T-Tar. Um, Weezing, like I said, don't like that as a grounded poison for the team, but the option for T-Spike options and neutralizing gas is decent enough for its reasoning. But overall, I love Dracogon's team. He's a really solid team, and I really like it. But just by the skin of their team, I think Stand Up Odin team is really good i like how it balances perfectly between offense speed and defense and support perfectly now your only removal is cinderace and dawn fan and cryogonal and cryogonal let's be honest it's not going to come to a ton of games but i think at least having that option is really good i love the disguise of illusion it is so disgusting Every single time you fight it, it's so annoying to never know if it is Zork or something else. You just get paranoid every single time. Uh, but just overall, I love the team. I think there's a lot of great pieces that work well together. And I just think it's honestly solid. Very much love that team. And since we're going to get into the end parts of the video right now, well, let's keep it on Team Plasma. Let's keep it on Team Plasma right now. You know, let's just keep it on Team Plasma for the results. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is the moment you have all been waiting for. The full 48 coach roster team ranks. Where these teams have been ranked from 48 to 1. And the list is as follows. <clears throat> Coming in at rank number 48, representing Team Magma, Jamal. Now, again, to reiterate, every coach that has the same score was factor in to this, and I had to look at the matchup wise. And compare the teams and which teams I liked more, and which teams, if they would face each other, which teams would win with. And in this case, I felt Jamal lost to the lowest ranked seed, so that puts him at number 48. Coming in at number 47, representing Team Magma, is Buff Cat. Coming in at number 46, ranking from the Rocket Tier, is Zodiac. Coming in at number 45 from the Plasma is SJ Am. Or SJ Yam, whatever they like to go with. Coming in at number 44 is Volt, Mr. H himself from Team Rocket. Coming in at number 43, the tier list man himself, Keegan from Team Star. Coming in at number 42 is Faye from Team Rocket. Coming in at number 41 is Bo from Team Star. Coming in at number 40 from Team Plasma is Ikpe Latne. Coming in at number 39, once again from Team Plasma, is Coach Window. Coming in at number 38, representing Magma, one of its two team captains, SJ. Coming in number 37 from Magma, Lego Mayego. Rounding out number 36, Coach Pep from Team Magma. 
Coming in number 35. Fitting the cold climate from Team Plasma, Cola's Ice. Coming in at number 34. From Mount Lava himself, it is Mount Man from Team Magma. Coming in at number 33 is head one of the two head captains of Team Plasma, Trey. Oh, Mount Man was also Team Captain of Magma. Just remembered that so I can give him his proper respects. Coming in at number 32 is Aurora Draco. And that's how you say it, Obo, is Aurora. It's easy, because they are from Team Star. Coming in at number 31, Kehan from Team Magma. Coming in at number 30 is Ant from Team Magma. Coming in at number 29, Dan Lex from Team Magma. Coming in at number 28, the Pokey Professor, Seth, from Team Star. Coming in at number 27, Ducky, from Team Rocket. Coming in at number 26, Zombie, from Team Rocket. Coming in at number 25, the Hidden Leaf Ninja himself, from Team Rocket, Neji. At number 24, we have the other head coach of Team Plasma, Shatter Backwards. At number 23, from Team Plasma once again, is Mingo. Coming in at number 22, once again representing Team Plasma, is Bleedle. Number 21, Coach Eden from Team Star. And now your top 20. Coming in at number 20 is Star from his own team brand, Team Star. Coming in at number 19, Armania from Team Star. Coming in at 18, Chef from Team Rocket. Arriving at the scene at number 17 is Wagon of Team Plasma. Showing up at your sweet 16. Because he's not 16. Is your boy. One of the head captains of Team Rocket Central. At number 15, because he looked trying to look like he's 15. John Jr. from Team Magma. Number 14. Itrim or Itrim, whatever he likes to go by. From Team Magma. Number 13. The Meowth himself. And other head coach. For his division. Smaster from Team Rocket. Coming in number 12. Representing Plasma. Is Dracogon. Rounding out 11. Is Denali. And Team Rocket. Now people we have reached your top 10. And these were the top 10 teams I felt like had the best teams. Now, we all know what number one and number two are, but who they will be, that is up for debate. Same can be said for the few of the three to eight ranks. So, nine and ten pretty much are the last two nine ranked, nine out of ten teams coming out of this. So, let's get into this. Coming in at number 10 is myself, Thriller. Representing Team Plasma. Coming in at number 9. And the last team that was ranked 9 out of 10. Fitting that he's at number 9. Is Father Wind from Team Magma. Coming in at number 8. Is Bick from Team Star. Arriving at lucky number 7. Is Lunar from Team Star. Arriving at number 6 will be Alphon from Team Rocket. Now we arrive at the top five best teams, where three from five are the last three, nine and a half, 9.5 out of 10 teams. Coming in number five is the last captain of all the teams. 
And I know a lot of people are going to be really raging at this, and it's going to be good content. Is Obo from Team Star. Coming in at number four is Odin from Team Plasma. And at number three, we have Klyze from Team Star. Which leaves our number one and number two slots. The number, the only teams that were 10 out of 10. Now let's see, ladies and gentlemen, who was number two. Drum roll, please. Number two is representing Team Star in Lost Lodal. And with the number one overall rank in the team standings, at least when it comes to compare to all the other coaches, and based off just opinions, we have Sir Blue of Team Rocket. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the individual team rankings and the grand full ranking of the JJDL Season 4 Civil War rankings list. I hope everyone has enjoyed and had fun listening to me and talking to me about all this. I hope all of you are ready for JGL Season 4. Get hyped for Week 1 as I take on John Jr. and the Portland Nightshaders. And let's see if I can finally get my Week 1 win, my first win against John. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And we will see you guys for the Civil War. Peace.